Well, we are in the big data era. It's all digital. My name is Michael Norman, and I'm the director here at the San Diego Supercomputer Center. The San Diego Supercomputer Center. The center, a home for high-performance computing and educational research, was established in 1985, but the current director, Mike Norman, called SDSE home in 2000. Well, I came to the University of California, San Diego in 2000. Uh, I was recruited from the University of Illinois that also had a supercomputer center. And uh, I, was, I was recruited by the physics department uh, for my astrophysical research. Now, I've been using supercomputers much longer than that. Uh, in fact, I started using supercomputers when I was a graduate student at the Lawrence Livermore Laboratory. Um, and that was 35 years ago. So I've always used supercomputers and gone wherever I had to go in order to get the largest, most powerful machines. Hi, my name is Wayne Pfeiffer. I'm one of the founders of the Supercomputer Center here. This uh, chart here on the wall shows the history of the center starting in 1985. In that year, we opened our doors with our first supercomputer, which was a Cray XMP48. It was tied for fastest in the world. It cost $14 million and it had a peak speed of just under one gigaflops. That's one billion operations per second. That may sound like a lot, but because of the advance of technology described by Moore's Law, that this iPhone that I have has a peak speed of just about the same as that first supercomputer. Nevertheless, with that computer and its successors, we were able to do many significant uh, advances in science. And those are highlighted on this chart along with other technological advances as well. Um, let me just indicate uh, a few of them. In 1999, researchers from UCSD using uh, the supercomputers that we had at that time showed how to attack one of the enzymes that was crucial to HIV replication and that subsequently led to the development of an anti-AIDS drug. Then, more recently, in 2006, researchers from SDSC in collaboration with folks at the University of Washington did the largest ever protein structure prediction. And finally, here at the end of this chart in 2010, um, researchers from SDSC in collaboration with others did the largest ever simulation of a magnitude earthquake which was uh, modeled along the southern San Andreas Fault. Off the end of this chart, um, there have been further uh, developments. Last year in 2011, we installed Gordon, which is now the fastest supercomputer here at SDSC. It has a peak speed of 300 teraflops, which is more than 300,000 times faster than that supercomputer that we began with. Uh, Gordon is unique in that it was designed to address problems in data intensive computing specifically as opposed to just be a fast supercomputer, which is what uh, most supercomputers up till now have been. Um, my name is Sean Strandy. I am the project manager for Gordon, which is SDSC's latest high performance system that went into production here uh, early this year. Gordon was designed to address uh, data that is many orders of magnitude larger, hundreds of gigabytes, terabytes, or even petabyte size uh, data files. So for example, our flagship supercomputer, Gordon, is a data intensive supercomputer. It is designed to have the uh, input-output speed and the internal processing bandwidths in order to read in petabytes of data and uh, do something interesting with it scientifically. Because it's so expensive to run and power a supercomputer like Gordon, the data center managers have invented ways to save money and bring safety to the computers. My name is Matt Campbell. I'm the data center manager. I work here at the Supercomputer Center. My main responsibility is operation and maintenance of the facility. So to, supercomputers consume a lot of energy, both mechanical and electrical utilities. 
one of the main things that I have to focus on is minimizing our waste. One of the easy ways to do that is through aisle containment, which is basically a thermal separation barrier to keep your cold aisle and your hot aisle separate so your computers only take the inlet temperature that you want them to take and not get wrapped around from the back side. The nice outcome of that is that it allows your cooling system to slow down, which yields you utility savings and eventually dollars. For example, it's easier to keep a 200 square foot server room cool, but when you expand the room and make it many times larger, it's more costly to cool the place down. In order to cool only the most essential parts in the room, aisles are cooled with plastic barriers. Phil Papadopoulos explains how much power it takes to run a supercomputer and why saving energy is important. So I look at the power consumption of my house. And uh, I live in San Diego, so we don't have to have air conditioning. But on average, my house consumes about 700 watts of power. Day in, day out, that's what it, that's what it utilizes. That's about somewhere between two and three nodes of a cluster. So you thought about something like Gordon, you have somewhere between 300 and 400 houses worth of power represented by that particular cluster. The center is also prepared for earthquakes. So one of the one of the safety measures we take because you know the equipment that resides in data centers like ours is hundreds of millions of dollars is we install something called an ISO base which is a seismic isolation platform. That allows us to have the equipment or racks as we call them float nine inches on the horizontal plane in the event of a seismic event. So the plates just float, they, they, they will absorb the initial energy and float so they don't topple over or crash. Using these powerful computers are teams of researchers, all working on different projects yet connected by the computers. One of the research projects that the center undertook about 10 years ago was building a high-speed wireless network into the backcountry. And um, what it consists of is a variety of um, microwave relays sitting on towers on mountaintops all over San Diego County, parts of Riverside, and Imperial County. Using cameras that were installed on the towers, researchers were able to take pictures and wirelessly send them back for review. Well, it turned out that this was a wonderful way to detect backcountry forest fires. And in fact, in the 2003 fires, um, we had the first example of a, a live video feed of the, the growing blackening cloud. And so um, CAL FIRE, which you, who was responsible for putting out these fires, realized that this was a terrific resource uh, in terms of early warning. And so now we work with CAL FIRE uh, in order to provide them with uh, situational awareness in advance of a fire as well as during a developing fire. Not only has SDSC helped with disasters here, the center has played a major role during Hurricane Katrina too. One of the projects uh, that we did uh, during Hurricane Katrina was with the American Red Cross where uh, they were interested in creating a list of uh, all the people who were safe and well uh, from the disaster. Uh, the problem was that this information was spread all over the web because many independent uh, sites were going up virally and so there was no one uh, definitive list where they could find this. Uh, so we helped create uh, software that would actually crawl the web initially and create a single list out of all the uh, data that was on the web. A majority of these discoveries wouldn't have been possible without the center's ability to work with big data. Here at SDSC, uh, we are developing uh, specific resources to deal with this flood of data, both to collect it, to store it, and to analyze it. Well, I, I think the center's role is really uh, in, in trying to drive, drive the new, the, new the, the bleeding edge of, of these discoveries. So eventually all these things will be worked into well understood practice, but, but our job now is to be like a mixing bowl where biologists sit next to people who are really highly technically skilled at managing data so they can come up with new ideas for, for accomplishing those kinds of things. You know, how will we use this data better? How will we make more and more kinds of data work together to give more comprehensive solutions so we can uh, use, use genomic data better to predict health outcomes so people have a healthier life. So everybody's got a common, common uh, interest, which is high performance computing and, ran, and doing scientific calculation very quickly. Uh, but then they all have their own interests in, in different branches of science. So it's, 
that's what unifies us as this. Storing, preserving digital data is a big challenge worldwide. For example, the motion picture industry really has no solution for archiving their digital films for a hundred years. They don't know how they're going to do it. Uh, and so there are problems associated with the big data revolution, but um, that's progress. The San Diego Supercomputer Center will always be a home for science, research, and the future of our world technology.